Hi, my name is Stephanie Stack, and I'm a humpback whale researcher from Canada. I've been studying humpback whales for the past decade or so, uh, working all throughout the Pacific. So my work has taken me from Hawaii to Australia to Japan and back again to Australia. So that's where I'm working now. I'm a PhD candidate at Griffith University in Brisbane, Australia. And the focus of my thesis work is humpback whale migration dynamics in a changing climate. Humpback whales are a species of marine mammals. They're mammals just like you and I, but they undergo a really long distance migration each year between the feeding grounds and the breeding grounds. So their feeding grounds are towards the poles in the Northern Hemisphere, they're up towards the North Pole, and in the Southern Hemisphere, they feed around Antarctica. And then they move towards the sort of tropical regions nearer to the equator to breed and to have their babies each year. There's 14 distinct populations of humpback whales, and they all migrate to areas that are in this certain temperature range in order to have their babies. And then they stay for a few weeks, sometimes even a few months to raise the newborn babies before they migrate back to the colder waters. So we think that that temperature threshold is important for whales. And worldwide, we see them preferring to go to waters in the range of 21 to 28 degrees degrees Celsius. Uh, and so as the ocean begins to warm, there's a concern and a very real possibility that the breeding areas are going to get too warm. They'll probably get warmer than 28 degrees in the future. And we really don't know how that's going to affect humpback whales. Absolutely. So the warming ocean will affect the feeding ground as well. And in fact, it already is affecting what's happening in the feeding grounds. So we're seeing sea ice levels in Antarctica getting lower and lower each year. The sea ice is reducing in Antarctica in ways that are really alarming to the polar scientists. And that's going to affect the krill, which then in turn affects the entire food web down in Antarctica. The project that we undertook was a mapping exercise. We used data of the past and present ocean temperatures and then made predictions about what's going to happen um, from now until the year 2100 in ocean temperatures. And by doing this, we produced some really detailed high resolution maps of all of the waters of the world to look at where the water temperatures would exceed that um, number that the whales seem to prefer, that 21 to 28 degrees. We looked at two different scenarios. The first scenario was kind of if we continue as we are, so if people keep using a lot of fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gasoline, uh, what will happen by the year 2100? Over half of the breeding areas are going to exceed that temperature threshold for the humpback whales. So 67% of all the breeding areas around the world will become hotter than the temperature that the whales um, can stand right now. That's a huge number and that's really concerning. We found that with, with more renewable energy, um, still a certain amount of the breeding grounds would become too hot for whales, um, around 35%, but that's a much better number. What we wanna do with this research is encourage governments and individuals to make better decisions in their lives and to use renewable sources of energy um, because we need to slow down climate change and slow down the emissions that are happening into the atmosphere so that we can protect those breeding areas for the humpback whales. I had a very indirect career path, actually, uh, and I grew up on an island. I, I'm from Newfoundland and Labrador on the east coast of Canada, and so I grew up near the ocean, and that was a big part of my life and 
my heritage and the place that I came from. So I always felt drawn to the ocean and felt like I wanted to do something in that realm, but wasn't necessarily whales in the beginning. Um, I, I just really enjoyed science, math, and um, felt like I might do something in that realm. And then when I went to university, I started taking different courses. I uh, spent one summer working at a field station where you can do you know, real hands-on practical marine biology um, courses. They teach you how to collect data in the field and how to identify all kinds of different species like seaweed and invertebrates and everything that's out there in the ocean. And I just fell in love with that line of work. And so that's when I decided that that's what I wanted to do. 